Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natea and this is Nesthetics where I talk about topics that I care about and you should care about too if you choose. Today I am sharing my thoughts about Kenya Barris' movie, You People, on Netflix and the biracial black family narrative he continues to push in all of his work. I won't be strictly critiquing the movie because all things aside, I actually like the movie. I was prepared to hate it, I really was, but I can honestly say, just looking at the movie surface level, I enjoyed it and I thought there were many funny moments throughout the movie. So the way this review will be structured is, first I will talk about my critiques of the movie and Kenya Barris himself, and then I'll end on a positive note with the things I actually enjoyed about the movie. So moving into the first critique, I really didn't like how Kenya Barris just continues to push this narrative about the biracial black experience. I see it from both sides where I feel like I understand why he's doing it, but for the most part, it's like all of his work is focused on the biracial black experience and that's concerning to me. We've seen it in Blackish, Black AF, which was far from being Black AF, Mixedish, and Grownish. So the reason why I understand what Kenya Barris is doing is because he's making films based on his life experience. I'm a filmmaker, so I definitely understand that it's easiest to make films based on personal experiences. And most filmmakers make films based on their personal experience, whether it's an exaggerated or accurate version of their personal experience. It's easiest to tell a story when it's your story. And we know that Kenya Barris is married to a biracial black woman and he has a biracial black family and that has been reflected in all of his work. I also understand that the biracial black experience is different from the black experience. I've seen online biracial black people share their experiences about being biracial, how they feel like they don't fit in with being black or fit fit in with being the other racial side, whether it's white or something else. I remember I even saw a biography for a therapist one time that specialized in discussing biracial identity and accepting clients who want to talk to a therapist about that experience. So I can see how Kenya Barris' work gives a voice to the biracial black experience and specifically with you people the biracial black dating experience and all the struggles that could come with being in an interracial relationship or marriage however all things aside we also can't ignore the erasure of dark-skinned black people and biracial people representing black people in the media and this is my second critique for example with kenya barris's black af that was not black AF because that was another representation of a biracial black family. I understand that America is moving at a rate where in the next 10 years, more people will be multiracial and will be lighter skinned. Kenya Barris' work is a representation of this time. With old black family shows like Family Matters, Moesha, Good Times, those families were mostly brown and dark skinned people. Recently, another YouTuber, Maya, did a video about you people as well, where she talks about the erasure of dark-skinned black people. I'll link the video in the description box, and you all should definitely watch her video. And she posed the question, will dark-skinned black people be in the future? And that is a good question to consider because we are already seeing more biracial representation in the media biracial people playing black people and increasingly more multiracial people in America. Even with the role of Lauren London, like Lauren London's character has two dark skinned parents. Later they explained that Nia Long's character had a white grandfather and it's possible for that to happen where the child has the traits such as skin color or eye color as their grandparents. But at the same time, I feel like it was another excuse for Kenya Barris to book a biracial light skin character for this role when he easily could have booked a dark skin woman for this role, which would have represented the parents in this film, Nia Long, Eddie Murphy, two dark skinned black people. And like I said, I see things for both sides. I think it's because I'm a Libra and, you know, our, our, our sign is balance and the scales is what represents our sign. So I always see both sides of things. So on the other hand, Lauren London in real life is half Jewish and half black. And Jonah Hill is Jewish in real life. They're both from LA and the movie is based in LA. Possibly Kenya Barris was thinking because this movie is about a 
interracial Jewish and black couple, they could be a good fit for this role because they have those experiences in real life. So maybe that's why Kenya Barris decided to book Lauren London because of her real life experience being half black, half Jewish. But at the same time, we we still got a side eye Kenya Barris because he still does all of this, the same stuff in all of his films and all of his his work. So overall, I feel like Kenya Barris doesn't have bad intentions with the content he is creating. I watched a radio interview of Kenya Barris where he addresses what he thinks of the criticism of him being obsessed with light-skinned people. I'll leave the interview in the description box, but it seems like Kenya Barris, as I said earlier, is drawing from life experiences and giving a voice to the biracial black experience since he has biracial kids and a biracial wife. He has witnessed their experiences and is simply translating them to the screen. However, even if his intentions are good, we cannot negate how his content impacts dark-skinned black people and the decrease of dark-skinned black representation on screen. Now that we've talked about black representation on screen, I also want to talk about Jewish representation. This is less of a critique of mine, but more of a critique I saw from Jewish people. So this is my third critique. I read some articles written by Jewish people about how they felt about the movie and some Jewish people did not like how they were represented in the movie. To summarize the articles, they criticized how Jewish people were represented as white, ignorant, and people with white privilege. They felt like the movie didn't take the oppression of Jewish people seriously, like during the dinner table scene when they were comparing the black experience to the Jewish experience. Some of the critics were saying they felt that that scene made Jewish people look like ignorant white people with white privilege. During that scene, Akbar, played by Eddie Murphy, argued that Jewish people don't experience going outside and risk being mistreated by the police for being Jewish and that Jewish people are well off financially. Unfortunately, because of how race is placed on a pedestal in this country, American Jewish people have been racialized as white. So they are viewed as white people in America. I see where these criticisms are coming from. I think we do have to be careful about how groups of people are represented on screen. I personally have not seen a lot of movies with American Jewish representation. So if this is someone's introduction to American Jewish people and they don't personally know any Jewish people, then this could create like bias and people could think that this is an accurate representation of what American Jewish people are like in real life. I went to college with white students who grew up in small towns and had literally never interacted with black people in real life, but only had seen black people on the television screen. So their idea of what black people were like was from television. So I think we really have to be careful about how groups of people are represented on screen because that can lead to mis misconceptions about those people and stereotypes if they don't actually experience those people in real life. Now that I'm done with my criticisms, I'm going to go to, I guess, my compliments about the film. So my first compliment is that I like that this film highlighted Black and Jewish relations. I think this needs to be explored more. I feel like there is tension between the black and Jewish community and there is this kind of oppression Olympics to determine who had it worse. Also, over the years, black people have been compared to Jewish people to discredit the racism and injustice black people continue to face. For example, black people are stereotyped as being lazy for not picking themselves up by their bootstraps like Jewish people did. And those arguments really hold no weight when you look at the history of black people in America. I think with any marginalized group, whether it's Jewish people, Asian, Latinx people, we all have our own unique struggle. There are similarities in our struggle, but none of them are comparable. All of our struggles are unique and we can't compare one group's success to another group's oppression. And I think it's really inconsiderate for people to be like, oh, look at what Jewish people did and how they have wealth and built wealth. Black people, why don't you do the same thing? And I think that this movie, even though it highlighted it briefly, I like that this movie highlighted black and Jewish relations because I feel like this is a conversation we need to have more. My second compliment is that I like that this film highlighted white behavior around black people. 
Um, for example, Ezra's parents, especially his mother in the film, was trying way too hard when they met Amira, played by Lauren London. Ezra's mother was telling Amira she loved her hair and her nails. She asked what she did to her hair, if she did a roller set. Ezra's parents kept mentioning other black people every time Amira mentioned something about her life. For example, Amira said she was from Baldwin Hills. Then Ezra's mom brought up Magic Johnson. That's just like if I tell a white person, oh, I'm from Houston, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, Beyonce's from there. Like, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> like, what does that have to do with me? I mean, I like Beyonce, but if I'm from Houston, I don't want... Like, it's like you're comparing me to every black person, just like some people think all black people look the same or we are a monolith when we're not. I feel like sometimes white people try too hard to show that they can relate and understand black people, but it comes off as microaggressions. Like, y'all don't have to do all of that. It feels performative when y'all are doing too much. I understand it comes with good intentions and y'all are trying to make us feel comfortable and also just trying to make sure that we feel like you um, accept us in our blackness and all of that. But sometimes it's just, it's just trying too hard and doing too much. And also with Jonah Hill's character, he was giving off similar vibes. His character seemed like that white boy who loves black culture and black women and it's borderline fetishization of black culture and people. And although he learned and talked a lot about black culture through his podcast with his friend, Sometimes it felt like he was being performative. For example, when he would tell subtle lies, when Akbar, Amir's dad, mentioned Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam, Ezra was like, oh, I love him. He's the GOAT, but didn't even know who he was for real. So even though I don't like this kind of behavior in real life, I like that it was highlighted in this film because it's important that people recognize the behavior and the way it comes off more annoying than it does inclusive. I've had experiences like this with white people, so it was nice to see it being highlighted in the film, and I felt like I could relate to it. I felt like I was being seen. It felt like my experiences were being seen, even though, you know, this movie was mostly about a black and Jewish interracial couple. I couldn't relate to that part, but this was a part that I could relate to. And my last compliment of the movie is simply that it was funny. The humor in this movie was different and it didn't shy away from controversial humor. The funniest line for me in the film was the dinner table scene where Nia Long said, Honey, go get my slave receipts out my purse. It was her carrying around slave receipts in her purse for me. Then Ezra lied and told Amira that the engagement ring was his grandmother's Holocaust ring and I thought that was funny too. I saw an article that said this movie was trying too hard and there are a lot of, you know, negative reviews about this movie, but there was something I liked about the movie doing too much or trying too hard. I think that's what made the movie unique and what made it funny for me because it's like, I don't know, the humor was just different and it was just like, yeah, they were trying too hard, but that's just what made it funny for me personally. So that is all for this review. I know that some people are divided about this movie. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some are in the middle. So let me know your thoughts about the movie in the comment section below and your thoughts about Kenya Barris's pattern of highlighting the biracial black experience in his work. And thanks for watching this video. I will see y'all in my next one.